only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this month's Great Garment Graphics webinar presented by Stalls Transfer Express. My name is Andy Curtis, and if you've joined us before, I appreciate you coming back to see us again. If you've never joined us before, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, fitting us into your day. Uh, we love doing these monthly webinars with Great Garment Graphics, a great chance to provide some industry education. I am the uh, trainer here at Transfer Express, so this is one of my favorite activities. Uh, with me on the line is Jody Weiler from... Great Garment Graphics. Hey, Jody. Hi, Andy. Thanks so much for joining us today. And to all of you out there in webinar land, thank you for joining us as well. Uh, if you've ever joined me before, you know that we like to start the webinar off with just a couple questions uh, to see who the audience is. Uh, Jody is going to be the lady behind the curtain who's going to help us with the polls, and she's going to help us with some questions as we go. So, Jody, if you want to go ahead and launch that poll. Yes. What percentage of your business is soccer? Since today's topic is kick it up using custom transfers for soccer, uh, this question is pretty pertinent so we can see uh, how many soccer veterans we've got with us. And it's kind of funny, I was just telling Jody before we started here that uh, this will be our first big soccer webinar actually here at Transfer Express. It should be fun. Okay, Andy, like 86%, 0 to 25%, so maybe... We'll be able to okay. switch that up after this. All right, good. Well, hopefully what we'll do here is provide some education for those of you who aren't doing a lot of soccer and tell you how you can. Um, and we got one more poll question, Jody, if you'd shoot that one off too. We'll... Yep, let's see. And the next one is, what is your biggest challenge with soccer? And here's just a few selections. Now this will be useful too because if uh, there's a lot of you out there in webinar land who aren't doing soccer, it'll be uh, nice to know what the reasons might be for it so we can concentrate in those areas. I'm going to close this in just a second here. We still have some results trickling in. Okay, and it looks like because so many of our attendees today are new, Andy. Okay, all right, well, that works for me. I can handle that demographic. Uh, thank you, Jody. Uh, as we go through the webinar today, folks, I encourage you to ask questions. Uh, Jody will be the lady behind the curtain who's going to help answer those questions, and at the end, uh, we usually have enough time to do a little bit of a Q&A. Um, so that's going to be the plan for today, folks. We're going to start off with some soccer information, just some general info on uh, the uh, soccer industry and transfers and all that good stuff. And then towards the end, uh, the middle of the end of the webinar, we're going to do like a small soccer fashion show. We're going to talk about uh, some designs you can use and uh, the different types of soccer jerseys out there and how you can decorate them. Stuff. So a lot of good information today. So as we go, please ask questions. And uh, if we don't get to your question, uh, myself and Jody, if we don't get to it right now, you will get a personal email from us uh, after the webinar. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get moving here. All right. So we're going to start off talking uh, just some generalizations about the soccer uniform. Uh, first of all, the question becomes, should I do digital transfers or should I do screen printed transfers? Uh, the soccer industry is not like the baseball industry. Baseball uniforms tend to be very screen printed. That's, that's the old norm. That's the standby for baseball. Soccer is a little bit more flexible. Soccer jerseys, you see uh, either or. Um, soccer tends to be a very colorful sport. There's a lot of colors used in the logos. So, uh, with soccer, you do have the choice of going, either digital or screen print. And we're going to talk about when to go where as we go through the, the uh, webinar today. Um, but usually the things you're going to use to determine this are going to be uh, how many pieces you're printing, how many colors you're printing. And I know I didn't put it on the slide here, but another third factor is what uh, fabric type the uniform is. So those will be the three things that you use to determine uh, if you should go the digital or the screen print route. Um, 99 times out of 100, you can really go either way on soccer uniforms. 
times, but we'll uh, talk about that as we go. Uh, you can use your artwork. Uh, a lot of those teams out there are organizations. They've been uh, doing the sport for a very long time. We constantly see uh, crests with established in 1950 this, 1960 that, uh, years and years and years. So we know a lot of these clubs have their own artwork, so we encourage you, if they have custom artwork, by all means, send it to us. Uh, but at uh, Transfer Express here, we also provide you with a way of doing your own soccer logos, of course, without having to have a graphic designer. Um, one of our main, main points here at Transfer Express is we have a catalog full of customizable designs called the Idea Book. You simply flip to the soccer section, choose a design, and change the text to say whatever you want. We'll uh, elaborate on that in just a second here, but uh, pictured at the bottom of this slide, I'm showing you our three most popular soccer layouts. Um, now, this is just in general. Uh, the one on the far right there, that QSO 57, I've been at Transfer Express for 11 years, and that's that QSO 57 there, that's the old standby. That's one of our super popular soccer designs. We see a lot of that every year. But on the far left there, that QSO 156, that is one of the newer soccer designs. And I'm pretty certain that's one of our uh, Dane Clement, great Dane graphics designs. So one of the hip new soccer designs, really super popular. So make note, these are the three soccer standbys from Transfer Express here. Uh, but let's elaborate a little bit more on that whole uh, designing, creating artwork thing that I was talking about. You do not have to have a graphic designer on staff. Uh, you don't have to have somebody coming up with your own soccer designs. We provide the designs for you. Uh, in the top left corner of my slide there, you'll see the idea book picture, the very top left corner there. Uh, our idea book, again, is full of customizable designs. You simply flip open the idea book, choose one of the designs, in this case, we're giving you the example of QSO 150 on the far left. You see Compton Soccer 2013. Uh, that's what QSO 150 looks like. Uh, you choose the design, then you change it. We changed Compton to Brooklyn, changed the year to the word mom, uh, changed the fonts a little bit, stuck, uh, stuck some color in there. And uh, you call us up at Transfer Express here. You tell us what you want to do. Give us a size, colors, and quantity. We ship the transfers to you, you press it, and voila, you see the final product there, Brooklyn Soccer Mom. Uh, so this is how we make the soccer industry and all the sports industries easy for you folks, is you don't have to have a graphic designer coming up with this stuff. Now the thoughts to say, again, that your customer might not have their own artwork, and then we always encourage you to send it to us. We can accommodate that as well. Uh, but this is just one way we're making life a little easier for you. So let's talk about the numbers. Uh, so we've, we've talked about uh, the design itself, but the numbers are a real big deal. And this is, again, every sport, not just soccer. But uh, soccer numbers are a little bit different than baseball numbers. Uh, first of all, uh, sometimes the numbers that need to be used are actually regulated by the organization. So if you're getting involved in soccer for the first time, it's a good idea to be on the same page as the organization you're working with. Find out what their standards are. Sometimes they do require specific numbers and fonts uh, for the names to be used. So you don't want to get stuck in a rut where you're uh, ordering numbers that you're not going to be able to use, that they're going to not be satisfied with. So uh, make sure you and your organization that you're working with are on the same page. Um, the typical size number for the front of a soccer jersey, if this particular organization does numbers on the fronts, uh, the typical size number is four inches tall for the front. And then the back, the size depends on whether we're talking youth or adult. For a youth, it tends to be six inches tall for the back. For an adult, it's eight inches tall for the back. Okay. Now keep in mind these are not written in stone rules. Every organization is a little bit different. You never know when someone's going to pull something weird out. But this is just in general. Four inch tall number for the front and then six or eight inch for the back depending on whether it's youth or adult. And for the record, the style of number that you see in the photograph there, that number four on uh, Mr. Shepard there, that number four is called soccer style. <laughs> the soccer style number is actually super, super popular for this particular sport. It's kind of funny because we don't see soccer style numbers used for other sports, uh, we, so we went so far as to actually name that number style soccer. So um, it's a triple stripe look. Um, it's uh, technically like a separated outline look, just uh, the fill and the outline are the same width, so it gives it sort of a unique look there, and uh, very, very cool, uh, but still very readable look. So, um, And if soccer style, of course, isn't your style, we do have several other style numbers as well, the old standby, uh, champ block, just plain block style numbers, so we still have, uh, still have those two. 
So let's elaborate on the numbers just a little bit. Uh, I know nobody likes to figure out numbers for teams. Uh, at Transfer Express, we have done our darndest to make numbering jerseys as easy as possible for you. And this is a trick, uh, for those of you out there in Webinar Land, this is a trick that all of you can use for all sports. This isn't just a soccer trick. But uh, whenever you're doing numbers on the backs of jerseys, we offer several calculators to help you. Uh, what I'm showing you here is a screenshot of our website, actually. But what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to pop out to that website real fast so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Uh, here's TransferExpress.com. This is just our main page here. Uh, so we're at TransferExpress.com. You'll notice there's this red bar that runs across the top of the screen, uh, this big red menu bar. Uh, the third thing over says names and numbers. I'm going to hover over that. I'm not going to click on it. I'm just going to hover over it. And then from here, you'll notice there's two columns. On the right where it says resources, we see a link that says number and letter calculation tool. If we simply click there, here are the number calculators I was showing you on the webinar slide. So from here, you simply decide which calculator is going to help you most. It depends on what you already know. Uh, the different calculators are built to help you figure out how many packs of numbers you need, depending on what information the uh, organization or the coach of the team has given you. Okay? Uh, so these four different different calculators will run you through. Uh, if you have a range of numbers, let's say your team kept it easy and you just have one whole team of 1 to 20, then you would click Run Calculator under Number Range. Okay? If you know digits and characters, if you happen to know I need this many A's, this many B's, this many C's, you can click on Run Calculator under Digits and Characters. Um, or if you simply have a list of names and numbers, you can Run Calculator under the I have a list of names and numbers. So, uh, let's pop back to the webinar here. So in the example that I'm showing you on this slide, this is what it looks like when you have one of the sequentially numbered teams. Now, uh, isn't it a fantastic thing when the teams do this? Uh, they actually force the kids to go 1 through 15, 1 through 20. Um, in this example, what we've done is we're doing a team, uh, five teams actually, of 1 through 15. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is pop back out to the website, and I'm actually going to show you this here. Um, so we're going to do a number range. I'm going to click Run Calculator here under Number Range. All right, so sequentially numbered teams calculator. First column here says number of teams. Well, I've got five teams, let's say. The starting player number on each team is number one. The ending number is number 15. So now what this is going to do is figure out how many packs of numbers I need for five teams of 1 through 15. But before I click calculate, I have to specify which number style. In this case, let's say we're doing some uh, adult soccer jerseys, some back numbers. So we're going to do uh, soccer style, and adult backs are 8 inch. And let's say we're going to do black. Now I'm going to click calculate, and voila, here we go. So what this is showing me on the far left-hand side, it's showing me the individual numbers. And then the next column over is showing me how many packs of those individual digits I need. That's one option. If I scroll down to the bottom here, it's actually giving me three total options. I can get five packs of numbers, meaning uh, one five pack of zeros, eight five packs of the number one, two five packs of number two. I can do that for 3675. I can do three express packs, which would get me some extras, or I could do one big number kit. Uh, this is simply showing me the three options I have, and from here I can choose which one I want and continue placing my order. Okay. So this is how we're making uh, number ordering as easy as possible for you folks. And I know this is a soccer webinar, and this does apply to soccer, but it also applies to any other sport you're doing numbers for, just FYI. So let's pop back to the webinar here. Okay. So if we talked about numbers, we certainly have to talk about player names as well. There are two strategies for you. On the left-hand side of the slide here, we're talking about pre-spaced player names. These are the player names that come on strips of paper. You don't have to peel any letters off. You don't have to do any work. Each strip is its own name. And what's fantastic about the names and the numbers we just talked about is they're all pre-spaced and pre-centered on the pieces of paper we ship them to you in. So you don't actually have to break out a T-square or a ruler when you're trying to center these names or numbers. You simply line the pieces of paper up together. So it makes it very easy. Um, the pre-spaced names come in one, two, two and a half, or three inches tall. 
and again, this is depending on the age group we're talking about. Generally, you're probably going to see two, two and a half inches tall for player names on the backs. Uh, there are five font choices. Uh, the old standbys, of course, uh, Hercules and Full Block. But this year, we've released a couple new ones. Uh, people were pretty thrilled. Uh, we have Arial, Impress, and Vogue for three new fonts for names. So something to spice your jerseys up a little bit if they're sick of the same old, same old. Um, now, uh, what's interesting about this is uh, we have another option. We have a different direction you can go as well. If you don't want to do the pre-spaced, or maybe you maybe you did the pre-spaced, but maybe you're going to offer um, maybe you're going to offer some kind of spirit wear actually at the soccer games. We offer you individual letters, peel and press letters. We call them. That's the right hand side of the screen here. These peel and press numbers are great for events like a soccer tournament, or maybe it's just a plain old soccer game. You go there to sell the spirit wear, and you offer your shirts for your regular price, but then you offer for an additional $2, I'll put your name on the back of your spirit wear. Uh, so then you pull out your peel and press letters, you peel off the letters you need for the person's name, line them up, cover them up, and press them. So uh, the peel and press letters are only available in the two fonts, the Hercules and the full block. Uh, so if you're coordinating, uh, if you're doing the same fonts, then maybe you make your uh, pre-space player names the same thing, the Hercules the full block. But, and then only certain colors, a smaller variety of colors for the peel and press letters. So uh, two different options. Now, of course, if you're doing a whole team, you certainly don't want to do the whole team's jerseys in the peel and press. You would want to do those in the pre-spaced. Um, but those peel and press, again, are great for events. They're great for on-the-spot lettering, uh, that kind of stuff. So... Uh, we'll talk about spirit wear a little bit more later in the webinar, but uh, uh, peel and press letters are also great just to have in your shop, just in case. You never know when you're going to have a last-minute uh, last jersey situation where you've got to do a, another player, maybe a substitute player or something at the last possible second. You don't have time or you don't have the money to order just one pre-space name, so you pull out your peel and press letters and do it right there on the spot. So uh, just a couple of uses for All right, so let's talk about some soccer uniform types. Uh, the point that I want to get across to everybody here is that regardless of the type of soccer uniform out there, and boy howdy, there are a lot of them, uh, regardless of the type of soccer jersey out there, there is a way to decorate it. Uh, so what we're going to do is go through some of the more popular types of soccer jerseys, and I'm going to show you exactly what you can do with them. Uh, the first one we have here is probably one of the more popular. This is Dazzle. Uh, this is polyester dazzle in the case of the photograph here. Now, for the record, there is a such thing as nylon dazzle, uh, so it's very important to make sure when you're working with your jersey that you know if you have polyester or nylon. Uh, as I said in the photograph, this you're looking at here is polyester dazzle. Um, dazzle is actually just a sheen. Uh, it's a type of weave that uh, the polyester fibers have been woven to give it a smooth, shiny look. Um, Dazzle is actually really cool because it doesn't wrinkle very easily, it doesn't stain very easily, so Dazzle has become super popular in the entire sports industry actually, not just, uh, not just soccer. But um, the, one of the things we hear about a lot though, people go, well, Dazzle, I, it looks you know, so silky and nylon-y, is, is it uh, hard to press on? Um, no, it's the, the actual Dazzle fabric does not affect adhesion at all. Uh, so in this case, you could go digital or screen print. And again, the choice in this case would come down to, if you've got uh, these polyester Dazzle jerseys, the choice would come down to, do I have a lot of colors in my artwork? In our example here, the Newark Knights, they only have two colors, red and white. So you know what? It's only two colors. We can do a pretty cost-effective screen print for that. Uh, if it was more colors, let's say it was four or five colors, yeah, then it would be expensive for screen print, and we might go the route of digital. Okay. Or if it had been nylon, we would go the route of digital. But we'll, uh, we'll get there in just a couple minutes here. Uh, the layout you're looking at is another one of our very popular soccer designs, QSO45. Uh, the type of transfer we went with was goof proof. And again, the number on the back, so this is an adult jersey, the number on the back is 8 inches, and the name style is actually 3 inch tall. So uh, you get a good look at what a finished adult jersey looks like with 8 inch numbers, 3 inch names. And the ever popular polyester dazzle. 
So let's move on. Here we've got 100% jacquard patterned polyester. Uh, now this is another one where people look at the type of jersey and they see how the texture is different. There's little uh, like stripes of shininess. It's got a weird, a weird pattern, a weird texture to it. So people's first thought is, oh gosh, I don't know if I can heat press on that. Uh, again, the key word we're looking at here is polyester. And this is sort of a trick that uh, I think all of us in the industry learn at some point in time or another is you learn to look at the words in these jerseys and learn which words are important. Uh, we see 100% jacquard patterned polyester. The jacquard and the patterned part don't really matter. It's the polyester part that matters. Since it's polyester, you can use digital or screen printing. So again, we have the same question. Does our customer want to do something with lots of colors? In this case, green briar soccer, it's only two colors. It's gold and black, so we can certainly do screen print, which is what we've done here, polytrans. Um, and it's very cost effective again. Now, uh, what's interesting here is you're seeing an example of how you can totally use the color of the jersey to your advantage. Uh, notice how we've only printed two colors, uh, black and gold, and we've let some of the red show through in the soccer ball. So we have the illusion of having a three-color transfer. Um, this is something to keep in mind, folks, because a lot of people fail to fail to realize you can totally use the, sh the color of your jersey, of your shirt, uh, to your advantage here. Uh, plus, the other way to look at this, too, is when you leave some of the areas show through, like in this case, the uh, holes in the soccer ball, some of those, uh, I think those are pentagons maybe, or hexagons, some of those hexagons in the soccer ball, they are show through to the red jersey. Now, what that's allowing it to do is it's allowing the shirt to breathe more. So when this kid's in the middle of a soccer game and he's working out with sweat, uh, the uh, holes, the areas where the show through is, is going to let it breathe more as opposed to uh, keeping all of that heat pent up behind the screen print. So sometimes show through areas are not just artistic necess necessity. Sometimes it's good just for the breathing aspect. So something to keep in mind. Um, and again, uh, we've got a little bit of... Uh, it, even though he's a young kid, we've done a eight-inch size number on the back of his jersey, and then a two and a half inch tall name. So you get a good idea there of how much space we're taking up on the back of uh, Gabe's jersey here. So, uh, and uh, QSO7, another one of our super popular soccer layouts. All right, here's another one that people get hung up on. We've got moisture wicking cool mesh polyester. Now, what's kind of funny, again, in the garment industry, and this isn't just soccer jerseys to, to give credit where credit's due. This is the whole sporting goods industry. You hear terminology like that where cool mesh, what's cool mesh? It's sort of a brand thing, actually. Uh, moisture wicking just refers to the fact that it pulls moisture away from the skin. Cool mesh is more of a brand thing. So, again, when you get past the words that aren't that important, again, we have polyester. Okay, Polyester can have either digital or screen print. So again, we have that question of how many colors does our customer want to do? Uh, in this case, what we've actually done is we have gone the route of the CAD prints. And the reason we did this was because our customer wanted to do a couple colors. I know it's a little hard to see on the slide there, but the design for the Monterey Soccer Club there, we've got some green, we've got blue, we've got white. We've got a soccer ball that's black and white with some gray shading in it. So if we, we could screen print that technically, but if we did, it would get sort of costly because of all the colors going on there. So in the case of the Monterey Soccer Club, we decided to go the route of digital cat prints. We could have gone screen print, though. It's not because of the garment type that we didn't do that. It was because of the amount of colors they used. Uh, and in this case, we've done a four-inch number on the front. Here's an example of how some teams do choose to do numbers on the front. It's not all teams. It's sort of here and there. Organizations are different across the board. But uh, this team, we did four-inch numbers on the front and, again, eight-inch on the back. And you can see we went with the all-star numbers this time. Uh, the all-star numbers are a little bit easier to read than the soccer numbers maybe because you've got that thick fill. So uh, still gives you the separated outline look, which is popular with soccer, but uh, a little bit easier to see the distance maybe. And then a two-inch tall name. It's kind of funny because when you think about it, we offer two, two-and-a-half, and three-inch tall names, and you almost wonder, oh, does it make that much of a difference? Well, it sort of does. If you compare them here, it, uh, you certainly see a difference. 
Um, and it's worth noting, folks, I'm sure somebody's probably asked Jody by now, uh, the slides will be available at greatgarmentgraphics.com. Uh, if you want to check these slides out uh, later on, we will post them on the blog there at greatgarmentgraphics.com. So a little side note there. Uh, so anyway, uh, again, the point on this particular jersey is not to get caught up by the words moisture wicking or cool mesh. Those aren't the important words. The important word is polyester. So polyester, you can do digital or screen print. We just chose to go the digital route. And for the record, this is our express print product. So it's a, one of the more cost-effective uh, digital products. So let's go ahead and continue that thought. Uh, I told you how the moisture wicking polyester, you know, uh, again, we could go either way. So what we're doing here is uh, this is another moisture wicking polyester, but we've gone the route of screen print instead of the route of digital. Um, again, the important word is polyester, so we can do digital or screen print. In this case, this particular soccer club, the Comets, they have gone more simple. There's only two colors, orange and white, so it was very easily screen printed, and our Goof Proof screen print product is fantastic for polyester, so we want the route of uh, Goof Proof. Um, and again, it's only two colors. Now, we've shown you just another example there at the bottom right of the screen. We've showed you another screen print version. Uh, this is the Huntington Tigers down there. Again, screen print, uh, poly trans transfer type. Um, now, for the record, uh, I'm sure people are thinking to themselves, well, there's a whole bunch of screen print types. We've seen goof proof, we've seen poly trans. Uh, some of you who are more educated might know there's also hot splits, other ones out there. Uh, whenever you're placing these orders with us here at Transfer Express, if you simply tell the representative that you need some help picking one, we'll guide you through and tell you what's best for what. Um, our reps are very good about explaining to you what uh, what type of transfer type you're using. Um, back to the example, though, the Comets there, our little orange and white guy, we've got an 8-inch number on the back of his jersey and then a 2.5-inch tall name. Uh, now, the style here, this number is our champ style number. Uh, our experience is this is the most popular type of number. This one sort of transcends all the different sports genres. Uh, champ is the one that we do sell the most of. So if uh, your team is not into the soccer look, maybe they don't really care about the whole separated outline idea, Champ is always the standby. So here is another one. This is called Pinhole Mesh. Now, there are a ton of words out there associated with mesh. There's pinhole and porthole and micro mesh. Keep in mind that those words, those words are just describing the size of the holes. Okay? So just because you hear pinhole mesh or you hear porthole mesh or you hear micro mesh, don't get paranoid and think that that's going to dictate the type of transfer you need to use. That's not really the case. Um, in this case, our pinhole mesh is polyester. So again, it's not nylon, it's not something special, it's just polyester, it just happens to be small pinholes in the mesh, so we don't have to worry about doing a special type of transfer. Uh, so again, we ask ourselves, how many colors is this person doing? In this case, this particular team, the Griffin Knights, they decided to do two colors, black and white, so we've gone the direction of screen print. And our Goof Proof product works because it's only polyester. Um, now, uh, again, a uh, neat part about this particular design, you notice that uh, there are some little dots in the tail of the uh, soccer ball there, the uh, swoop, the motion tail of the soccer ball. Uh, we call that a noise pattern where we've just put a pattern of, random pattern of black dots to give it sort of a shaded look. So kind of a neat little feature we can give, uh, give your design some texture there. But again, uh, the thing to learn from this slide, folks, is not to get hung up by the word pinhole, uh, especially uh, in the soccer world, you'll find a lot of jerseys that have those words pinhole or cool mesh or moisture wicking, and don't get hung up by those words. The question is, is it nylon or is it polyester? Okay, so let's talk about reversible mesh. This is another one that sort of throws people for a loop. Um, and it's kind of funny because when you're new to the industry, you tend to overthink this just a little bit. Uh, reversible mesh, first of all, the first question is always, is it polyester or is it nylon? Okay, And reversible mesh can get tricky because there are times when you'll have one layer, one of the colors is polyester, and one of the colors is nylon. Uh, it has happened before. We've had customers call us up and tell us this. So be careful when you purchase your reversible jerseys. Make sure you know what type of fabric each side of the jersey is. 
in this case, our uh, Macon arsenal here, uh, the Macon team is using reversible polyester mesh. Uh, since it's polyester, we can do digital or screen print. Uh, so again, we ask ourselves, how many colors is the Macon arsenal using? They're using two colors, so we went with the screen print route. Now, what can be tricky about this is how exactly do we print a reversible jersey? And this is where people will overthink this just a little bit. Uh, what you want to do for a reversible jersey, there's a couple strategies. The easiest way to do it, though, is threading your jersey. Okay. Now, if you don't have a press that is thread uh, threadable, if you have a Hotronics press, one of our clams, for example, and it's hard to thread, go out there and get yourself one of the heat press caddies, make it threadable, because you will blow through these reversible jerseys much quicker when you can thread the jersey. And, of course, when I say thread, I mean you're opening up the shirt and you're dressing the platen. Okay, so since we're talking reversible, obviously the problem is if you're trying to print all those different signs, you're going to have the ink going through the mesh. You're going to have the adhesive trying to go through the mesh and stick to the other sides, uh, and this creates a mess, obviously. So what you do is you thread the individual side that you're pressing on, you press it, and you simply just continue taking it off and threading each side. It makes it a lot easier. Um, now, if you can't do that, if you uh, just don't have the ability to go out there and get a caddy, you can't thread it, it's not an option, you can still do it by laying the whole jersey flat on the lower platen and just using a cover sheet inside. Okay, the whole idea is you want to put a layer, uh, a layer of paper, in this case a cover sheet or a non-stick piece of paper from uh, Stahl's ID Direct, you want to put that inside the jersey so when the ink and the adhesive go through the mesh, the holes, it doesn't stick to the other layers of the garment. Okay, so still very easy to do. A little more time intensive because you're doing fronts and backs, turning it inside, doing another front and another back. So it's very time intensive, but uh, keep in mind that being that you're doing all those different sides, you can charge more for that. So you're still making up for it. It's not something to shy away from. It's not something to be afraid of. So. And the goalie. The goalie shirts are where we can get a little bit tricky. Um, Here's where you have to ask yourself, again, first and foremost, what type of garment is it? Goalie shirts can be a whole variety of things, polyester and nylon. Uh, goalie shirts can also be uh, sublimated. Uh, for those of you out in webinar land who have heard of sublimated jerseys, uh, a crash course in sublimated jerseys, is the whole idea is these companies take a white polyester jersey and they use a gaseous dye process to dye that jersey a color or even a pattern of colors. The catch with the sublimated jersey is while that gaseous process creates a very vibrant, a very cool looking jersey, those dyes, they bleed very easily. Your transfers can very easily turn colors. The big secret to know if you have a sublimated jersey is you look on the inside of the jersey, turn it inside out. If the inside of the jersey is still white, but the outside is some kind of vibrant color, then you have a sublimated jersey. Okay? If you have a sublimated jersey that you only have one choice for decorating method, you have to use our digital product called Sublock. Uh, in this case, in this particular example, the Shockers soccer, um, and the Shockers, we have gone the route of polyester. It's not sublimated. Uh, so in the case of the Shockers, we've chosen to go with the digital product, even though it's polyester. And the reason is, if you look at the design that the team went with, you'll see there's gold, there's black, there's white, and there's gray. Okay, so we've got four colors going on there. And notice the design's a little bit on the smaller side. The digital product is priced based on size and quantity. So if you have a small transfer, the digital product gets really cost effective. So this is sort of a clever idea here. Because this design is a little bit smaller, and because it's got a bunch of colors, we went the digital route, and we saved a whole boatload of money. If we had screen printed this, which we very well could have, it would have been a little more expensive, because we would have had to do gang sheets, we would have had to do four colors. It wouldn't have been as cost effective. So a couple little tips there. Um, so again, the thing to learn here is to listen for that word sublimated. Okay, if you're going to bust into the soccer industry, that's one of those words you have to pay attention for. It's always heartbreaking to see a customer when one of our dealers gets into soccer for the first time. They haven't done their homework. They do all these sublimated jerseys. They screen print. They do screen printed transfers on them. They look great at first. The colors don't bleed immediately. They take a little time. 
Uh, so if you've got a red sublimated jersey and you put white goof proof on it, it'll look good at first. But let it sit overnight, maybe two or three nights. You come back one day and suddenly your white transfers have turned pink. So it's a shame when that happens. Uh, just the, the catch is always to pay attention. Make sure you're reading what the uh, what your customer is asking you to buy. Make sure you've looked at all the tags and all the manufacturer information. Okay. All right, soccer bags. Um, every sport has its uh, equipment needs. Uh, baseball and hockey have their bags. Soccer's got theirs too. Um, and depending on what type of soccer bag out there, again, the first question is: Is it nylon or is it polyester? Uh, the best bags tend to be nylon. The most cost-effective ones, the nicest ones, tend to be nylon. That's not a written-in-stone thing, but just usually. Uh, so in that case, when you do have a nylon bag, you want to use our CAD prints opaque. Um, now, you don't have to worry about sublimation with bags. Usually sublimation is something you see with the jerseys, not really the bags. But uh, So since it's not sublimated, we can go with CAD print opaque. Um, then if you do happen to have a polyester bag, uh, if it is polyester, then you can use our screen print product as well. Okay. And the example that you're looking at here, the three bags you're looking at, uh, all three of these bags are actually nylon. So we've done uh, CAD print on all three bags. Now, even though all three of these bags are nylon, even if they weren't nylon, because of the amount of colors in each of these logos, we would still have done CAD prints even though they would have been polyester. If you look at each of the designs uh, from left to right there, you see there's a lot of colors going on. Okay, especially in the one to the far right there. Uh, the far right, the Mifflin Warrior Soccer, you've got red and gold and blue and white and black and some shading in there. I bet you there's some gray if we look close enough. We could screen print that, certainly, but it would get a little bit costly. So there was two things that factored into this decision. Number one, the nylon meant that we had to go digital, but even if it hadn't have been nylon, there was a lot of color. So we went digital anyway. And, of course, spirit wear. Spirit wear is a big point. Um, this is something that it, it sort of transcends soccer, too. This, this is all sports. But um, the spirit wear is where you folks out there in webinar land, this is where you can make some serious cash. The jerseys are just one part of your project. But every team, every team needs some kind of spirit wear. Mom and dad need something, grandma and grandpa, aunt and uncle, brother and sister. Uh, even if it's, again, the example on the left there, it's just one of our easy print designs. Uh, two colors, uh, blue and white. Uh, I believe that's Columbia blue, actually. Uh, Columbia blue and white. The black areas have been left show through. Um, so that was a very cost-effective two-color easy print design for spirit wear. Uh, and then the example on the right-hand side is another two-color example for spirit wear for the... Uh, Warrior Heights Patriots there. Um, so again, folks, the point is spirit wear is a great way to make some extra cash. You can choose a simple design out of our idea book. You can choose simple garments, put them together for a pretty decent price, sell them there at the soccer games, and remember the peel and press letters we talked about at the beginning of the webinar. Have those peel and press letters with you at your uh, tournaments and your events, and you can not only sell that soccer mom, uh, soccer mom hoodie, but what if you offered for an extra three bucks, you'd put mom's son's name on the back of her hoodie. That's pretty slick. And you'll find that nine times out of ten, mom's going to spend an extra couple bucks to get Jimmy's mom on the back of her hoodie. So uh, uh, just a little little tip there for uh, those of you who haven't, uh, haven't done that before. So don't forget the spirit wear. Don't forget the spirit wear. <laughs> All right, so other printing as well. Get creative. Uh, there's more than you can. There's more you can do than just just jerseys and just spirit wear. Shorts. You can certainly put transfers on shorts. Uh, and again, the question is: Are they polyester shorts or are they nylon shorts? If they're nylon, you got to go digital. If they're polyester, we can do screen print. Uh, in the case of the shorts you're looking at in the picture here, these are polyester shorts. But again, we've done the CAD print because of the amount of colors and the size of the design. It was really super cheap for us to do the digital. Uh, the socks there, we got on the other hand, uh, the other side there, socks, super popular. Um, 
uh, since soccer players tend to wear shorts, you can easily decorate the socks. Now, I know that's not really uh, – other sports doesn't really work that way. You don't see that in basketball and baseball so much. But uh, soccer is totally acceptable to decorate socks. And our CAD print opaque product has enough stretchability that you can certainly put it on a sock, and it will endure the stretchiness of the sock without a problem. So another little idea there. Um, <clears throat> and, again, uh, when you – have these types of orders you're doing if you're a little bit confused because I know we've thrown a lot of rules out there if it's nylon, if it's polyester, if it's lots of colors. If you get a little bit confused, you're always more than welcome to call our customer service department. If you tell us exactly what you're doing, we'll help you figure out do you need digital or do you need screen print? And if you do need screen print, which type of screen print? We'll always we'll walk you through those questions. Uh, if you get confused, if you have any questions, just give us a holler. We'll uh, take you step by step and explain it uh, to you. All right, folks, do not forget the add-on sales here. This sort of goes hand-in-hand -hand with the spirit where we just talked about. In the example here, we're looking at this layout, QSO84, and you notice we've done the very top picture in the middle there. We've done the Brooklyn Warriors. We've done their jerseys. But it doesn't have to stop there. Again, every team needs more than just jerseys. They need banners for mom to hold. They need banners for the school to string up. I don't know about you guys, but here in uh, beautiful Mentor, Ohio, at the local high school, the stadium, they have banners for the different sports teams. Depending on what time of year it is, what sports going on, they have banners hanging up saying uh, team names or who the sponsors are or if they want a tournament, that kind of stuff, or if they're playing in a tournament. So uh, banners are super popular. Window clings are fantastic, um, and if you're looking to do the uh, ever-popular window decals, uh, the difference is a window cling is for the inside of your house or vehicle. It clings to the inside of the window. Uh, it's where a decal is semi-permanent. It doesn't come off quite so easy, easily. Uh, it's for the outside of a uh, window, like our car or house, whatever. And, of course, the wall graphics. Uh, in this example, we've gone the route of uh, putting the player, a little caricature of the player, uh, putting that up on his bedroom wall, but you can take it a step further. You could offer it to the school. Uh, the school certainly could use their logo in their locker room or in their hallways or in their, um, I don't know about you folks, but again, in uh, beautiful Mentor, Ohio here, we have the spirit section of uh, the school, so that would be something perfect for the hallway by the spirit shop. So just some little, little ideas in our non-apparel products there, folks. Okay, all right, so we're wrapping up here. Um, I, it was a lot of information we just threw at you, so if you want to either watch a recording of this webinar or get a copy of the slides, make sure to hit greatgarmentgraphics.com. Uh, if you have any questions that we don't get to, we're going to take some questions here, but if you have questions you think of afterwards or something we don't get to, welcome to give us an email, info at transferexpress.com. Uh, Jody, if you're still there, do we have any questions? We, can we do, Andy. Um, one question that popped up from Manda is, what is the lifespan, washability and dur durability of CAD prints as opposed to screen printing and so on? Good question, Amanda. Um, to be totally honest with you, both products, the screen print and the digital, will last the life of a jersey, whether it's baseball or soccer, it doesn't matter. They will both let both last the life of a jersey. Um, screen printing, the screen print product holds the same rules of any screen print. If you take a screen printed soccer jersey and you're washing it every day and you're throwing in the dryer every day, I mean, I know that doesn't make sense, but if you were to do that, screen print does eventually crack. Uh, and that's any screen print product, not just ours. That's the nature of the beast. The digital product won't necessarily do that. So the digital product does uh, not have that cracking that does happen. But uh, um, either way, both products will last a life. And do you have any uniform vendors that you recommend, Andy? You know what? There's a couple out there. Um, when it comes to the jerseys, our favorite place to recommend is Teamwork Athletics. And uh, I believe they're out in California. Um, teamwork is a great one. Uh, aside from that, I believe, and it's been a while, I believe Broder Brothers has expanded into the Jersey area to some degree. They have some simple stuff. Uh, so Broder Brothers is always a great place to start. Um, but our favorite at Transfer Express has always been Teamwork. Teamworks. Yep. yep. And then what is the standard size of an image on the front of youth jerseys? That is a tricky question, and it depends. Uh, it's good to ask your uh, soccer organization first if they have an opinion. If they don't, 
we call youth standard size, we call it 10 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches. That's a youth large. If you have really little kids, uh, really little kids, youth smalls, then we call it eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And Larry wanted to know if you, did he hear you say you can gang print the, um, the CAD prints? <laughs> no, unfortunately, Larry, we can't do that. Uh, we don't gang print the, the uh, CAD prints. And the reason we don't do that, um, the screen print product is printed on sheets of paper. So that's where the term gang sheet comes from, is the sheets of paper that the screen print is done on. The CAD print product isn't done on sheets of paper. It's actually done on a roll. Uh, so there's no time and energy savings in trying to do a gang. I, can't do a gang because it's a it's a roll. It's not a piece of paper. So uh, the digital product is charged uh, per piece. Uh, so no gang sheets on that guy. Sorry. Hmm. And then Melanie would like to know how you press on a full front zippered hoodie. Ah, uh, you know what, Melanie? Um, there's a couple ways to approach that. Uh, we actually just talked about that a couple months ago, Jody. I think we had <laughs> yes, we did. Our last webinars. <laughs> um, uh, you know what, Melanie? The quick answer is it depends on if your zip up has the flaps of fabric that cover the zipper or not. Uh, if they, if you do have the flaps that cover the zipper, you uh, make sure they're down, and you literally just press over the zipper the whole nine yards. You turn your pressure up just a tiny little bit to compensate since you're going to be pressing on the zipper. Um, but you press over the flaps and everything, and then when you've peeled your transfer, you just whip the zipper down real fast, and that'll sort of like cut the transfer as you go. Um, if you don't have the fabric flaps, then you do have to cut the transfer and apply on either half. Uh, it can be a little tricky to line up, but... Uh, uh, if you hit our blog, uh, transferexpress.com, and you look for split fronts, we actually explain a great way to do that, so picture by picture. And then M would like to know, just in case a team numbers the players starting with 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, um, they want to know if we key it into the screens, will it correctly calculate the required um, numbers? You know what? I, I That's the second time I've heard that this week, actually. I, I've never heard of a soccer team doing that before. Um, but you know what? I, what you're going to want to do is not use the sequential calculator because that sequential calculator is going to be confused. If you start with the zero, you're going to throw it off, and it's not going to know what you're talking about. Um, the very first number calculator, uh, the one um, that offers specific numbers, that's the one you're going to want to use, and I, I know it sort of stinks because you're going to have to go line by line and type zero, 01 on the first line, zero, 02 on the second line, zero, 03 on the third line. But that's what you're going to want to do. That will accurately calculate the numbers for you. Okay, and then, Andy, what about some pricing examples on the transfers? I know that's kind of a really, really broad question, if there's any guidelines you have perhaps or... You know what? Here's what I'll do, folks. Um, that's a good question, but it's sort of difficult to answer in a webinar like this. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out to the website if everyone wants to watch for just a second here. And I, I'm going to do better. I'm gonna actually going to show you where you can find it. Um, let's see. Let's go back to the home page here. All right. So here's the home page at TransferExpress.com. You're just going to come here to TransferExpress.com. And again, that red toolbar that runs across the top of the screen the second thing over says heat applied transfers. So if you're looking for a quote for the screen printed transfers, you're going to come here to heat applied transfers. You're going to go over to the resources column and notice the second option down says pricing PDFs. That's where you're going to want to go. And from here, we offer you a couple different pricing grids depending on what product you're looking for. So that's, that's what you're going to want to do. Um, I, I really can't give you a price quote on the webinar because um, I could be giving you totally off the wall. It depends, again, how many colors, how many pieces. Is it digital? Is it screen print? There's a lot of questions there. Absolutely. Um, and then I'm not sure, Willis, what you mean. Um, does this come in a kit? Oh, in a type of kit for, I think, for showing customers like a marketing type. Um, we don't have a specific soccer kit, uh, but it sort of depends on what you're looking for specifically. I mean, if you want samples of the soccer numbers or samples of a soccer layout, we have generic soccer examples we can tell you, um, not of a specific design or anything, but um, just generic soccer designs and then generic samples of the soccer numbers. If you give us a call and uh, specifically request that, we can certainly accommodate that somehow or another, yes. And uh, Manta would like to know if you could tell 
more about threading or stalls accessories in order to press bags and whatnot. Um, like you that know word, what? Threading. Threading, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's so funny because it's it's uh, not an easy thing to describe. I, I'm Italian, so I'm talking with my hands, and I know you all don't see me doing that. <laughs> um, uh, threading is, the idea is you open up your jersey, and you, almost like you're dressing your child, the bottom platen is your child, you're putting the jersey on over his head, uh, except you're dressing the lower platen. Uh, or threading it, uh, like you're threading a, um, like you're threading a needle is sort of the idea. Um, you're opening up that jersey and putting just one layer of the garment on the plat is the idea. Um, now, to properly thread a heat press, there's a couple things you need. Number one, uh, you need to either have a heat press that is on a caddy or you need to have the air fusion that comes uh, threadable, uh, pre-threadable pre with the uh, apparatus that's on. Um, uh, it's easy to go out and get one of those caddies if you don't have one, if you have a lamp machine. But aside from that, you also need a quick-slip pad protector. Um, those are sold by both Transfer Express and Stalls. The quick-slip pad protector is this... Uh, apparatus that fits on over the lower platen like a glove and it gives this uh, um, a very slick non-stick surface that makes it super duper easy to slide shirts on and off and what's super clever is if you threaded your jersey let's say you threaded it and you've pressed the front you don't have to take the whole jersey off to get to the back you actually since you've got that quick slip pad protector and it's so slick and uh, slippery you can actually just rotate the jersey while it's still on the plat. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, so that's 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 threadability in a nutshell. <laughs> and then, what about if your heat press isn't threadable? What are some other options? Uh, if your heat press is not threadable um, and you don't have the option of getting a caddy, maybe you've got a uh, different brand press and you can't go that direction. Um, then that's when you have to lay the entire garment, all the layers, on the bottom platen all at the same time. And then what you're going to want to do is either get cover sheets from us here at Transfer Express or get the non-stick sheets from Stalls ID Direct. And um, you're going to put those inside the shirt. The idea is to block the adhesive and the ink from going through the holes. So you slide that non-stick sheet inside the shirt through those layers uh, right underneath the top layer and that prevents uh, any of the sticking, any of the messiness. Yes. Um, and then I think just the final thing is, do you have any suggestions like care tips for jerseys? You know, Melanie um, was wondering if there were ways that she could tell her customers to better, um, you know, so that the garments look just as good at the end of the season as they do, um, you know, when, they, when she first hands them out to them. The, that's always sort of been that, that question, and I, I bet you a dollar if we polled a whole bunch of different sporting goods people across the industry, we'd have a, a, a whole bunch of different answers to that question. Um, at Transfer Express, the way we look at it is you, you want to treat your garment as nice as possible, um, and we know that mom, when she's got a bunch of kids and everyone's playing soccer and all that, she doesn't always have time to uh, uh, treat a jersey special, let's say, but the best way to launder a jersey or any, any garment is uh, you, when you dry it, you uh, air dry it if possible or dry it on low, the lower temperature setting. Uh, the dryer is sort of the thing that kills transfers. Uh, if you blast it on high for long periods of time, that's what's going to cause uh, that's what's going to cause it to crack or fade or what have you. So um, again, the products last the life of the jersey, but if you're looking to prolong the life and make it pretty as for as long as possible, the dryer is where you're going to want to be uh, be conscious. So air dry dry on low. Um, some people go so far as to say do it inside out. I personally, when I've done that with my, my, my stuff at home, I've never seen any difference there, but uh, you can always go that route too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Andy, I think that concludes our question and answer session here. I don't see any other questions coming in. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jody. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. I encourage you. Uh, there is a webinar coming up on March 14th, Stalls ID Direct. They're saying uh, how they do that, trend inspiration for decorators. I, I think I might actually attend that webinar. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I know. Doing Who's doing that one, Jody? Josh. Josh Ellsworth is ah, conducting that okay. one. So he's got all kinds of, I think he's doing either four or five um, just really interesting techniques that, um, you know, we hadn't thought of or maybe we haven't seen 
that's going to leave you, know, you saying, you know, you have other your competition saying, how are they doing that? Uh, that's actually pretty cool. I, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to sit down on that one. But uh, if you want to join me again in April, I will be back with you on April 11th for Bling It Up. This is going to be a fun one, uh, showing you how to add some bling to your repertoire. So uh, feel free to join me again on April 11th. In the meantime, have a fantastic rest of your day, and thanks for joining us today. See you later, Jody. Yes, you too, Andy. Have a great day. And um, and for me, all of us here at Great Garment Graphics, thank you for joining us, Andy, and thank you um, for those who did attend. Have a great day.